Yeah, what did you enjoy most about the, the first season? Because you're coming to it for, uh, fresh, like, for the second season. Yeah. Wait, what did I think about the first yeah, season? Yeah, what did you enjoy most about it? Oh, uh, I think the stakes and the seriousness with which it were, they were taken. Like, there's, it's kind of, like, dark. It's really has this undertone of, of uh, omen, you know? Like, like, big, dangerous things are out there in the, in the universe. And, like, I love that it includes that, um, that darkness and undertone. I just wondered how much of a Star Trek fan you were yourself before you got uh, cast in the... In I, I, I was... Um, I, Star Trek, the original series, went into syndication about the time I was eight years old, uh, back when we, we had five TV channels, ABC, CBS, NBC, PBS, and the local UHF channel. Sunday night, six o'clock. <laughs> I still remember the time slot. And... Uh, I've seen every episode of the original at least three times. Um, yeah, and that was my really my introduction to what what the, the 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 horizons of what TV could do, of what storytelling could do, what science fiction could do, and hey, maybe I might want to be a part of this, you know. So so being asked to to walk on the bridge and sit in the captain's chair when I literally did that for the first time, it was. Surprisingly emotional. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It was. I got a little misty. Yeah. What can you tell us about how your characters evolve mm -hmm. um, over season two? <laughs> it's more of a. We were saying it's like a. For us, it's like a kitchen sink drama, but in a Klingon setting. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, we, 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 it's, it's the fallout. It's the aftermath of everything that's happened. The confusion in our relationship. What it means why we still have to perform our our duties as these sort of peace ambassadors in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's um, time for conversation that wasn't had at, at the end of the first season. There was so much going on, and I think for all the characters, it's this sort of decompression. And, uh, yeah, Com conversations are being had. <laughs> in, a, in a garden. In a garden. She has a Laurel garden, has a garden. Yeah. It's very Klingon-y. And when we got our first sight of um, Spock, uh, your character in the trailer, yeah. uh, we saw the beard and a lot of people were talking about the beard. Tell yeah. us a bit about the look of Spock and what it was like for you to put the ears on the first time, the tips. Uh, well, I, I, I'm growing to love the look of Spock. I actually hadn't actually really seen what he looked like until a week ago when we did this big press shoot. I've seen like photos of, of the monitor, the video monitor, uh, but I hadn't seen like just photos of myself and it was pretty extraordinary. The first time it really felt like real. Um, putting the ears on for the first time was, it was in the very, very beginning and kind of in the midst of my initial wave of preparation. And so I felt like just not ready. And like, how am I ever going to do this impossible task of taking on Spock? Um, but uh, it's really starting to feel like some other home for me. So that's wonderful. And I think it's working. <laughs> what can you tell us about um, Captain Pike? Or what did you most enjoy about playing him in season two? I like. I really like Pike's vulnerability, and his his willingness to admit I I have no idea what's going on, <laughs> you know. So if anybody on the bridge has got a better idea, let's do that because I don't know I don't know where this is going, uh, and I'm, I don't think we've really seen that in a Star Trek captain before. It's usually all very strong. Yeah, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. We're gonna. Here's my list of things we need to accomplish. No, Pike is completely unabashed about the fact that he sometimes just completely lost. And I think it makes those scenes a lot more exciting because of that. And what's it like getting to grips with um, Klingon the language? Mm -hmm. It's fun. It's a good, it's a fun challenge. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, I, it, for, I enjoyed the fact that we, in the beginning, we had more, you know, subtitles and it, it felt like we were in that world. It made me really believe it. It felt we were masked, we were doing, speaking another language. Yeah. You, it's like watching a foreign language movie. I feel like you get in the world more, you believe it more. So yeah. I really enjoyed that you have to um, take the time to learn it, you know? Like, you can't <laughs> budget. It. You can't improvise Klingon. I tried. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, it just kind of makes you really evaluate what's happening in the scene because mm. you have to know what those emotional beats are. And season one was um, quite focused on the war with the Klingons. What can audiences expect from season two? Um, so season two, we're coming out of the Klingon war into a time of peace. And the, the Discovery gets approached by um, Captain Pike of the, U of the, the, start of the NCC 1701, the Enterprise, 
because they need a temporary captain and he needs to track down this mystery of these seven signals that are out there in the galaxy. And um, uh, it's sort of a, a combining of, of two necessities. And any favorite phrases? We won't ask for any swear words or anything like that, but have you got like a, a phrase that you particularly enjoy saying? Well, our new favorite, well, I, I, uh, he's my torchbearer, which is Shech Gengwewe. Shech Gengwewe, yeah, it's a nice word. We but it's just like got a little adorable Human's quality. Man. Human is a nice yeah, word. Yeah, human. He, yeah, any time, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. And I think this series is like wonderful escapism, mm -hmm. but um, do you think season two has something to say about life on Earth like in 2019? I think it always does, I think, yeah. especially for your character. I mean, yeah. it's an empowering female figure, you know. Yeah, that's... there's definitely, yeah, I, I think that thematically there's, it's relevant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on a very deep level. And you met with um, Leonard Nimoy's family, didn't you? I did. did. Um, what was that like, and did they give you a bit of an insight into how he saw the character? Yeah, uh, it was so surreal. I was driving over the 405. I'm born and raised in LA, and it was actually at this place called the Sportsman's Lodge in, uh, in Studio City, where I've been as a child. Uh, and they were so warm and kind and welcoming, and I think kind of the first step of making me feel worthy of this. And with regards to how did Leonard prepare they were like, they were uh, uh, not vague, but they were like, watch the original series. And that really forced me to think very deeply and watch very closely what was happening and what Leonard was doing with that original Spock and have my own interpretation of it. You know, obviously I wish he could be here to give me some guidance and insight, but in a way it's a gift because I have to understand for myself, you know, who, he, who Spock is. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.